Hi everyone and hi Joyce. Uh, I'm Sarah. I'm a fitness, health, and femininity coach, and I have this podcast. And I'm I have here my second guest. Uh, hi Joyce. Uh, hi Stella. Can you introduce yourself? Yes. Um, first off, thank you so much for having me here. It's such a privilege. Um, to be part of your podcast. Uh, yes, so I am a trauma and empowerment coach. I am based in Sydney, Australia, uh, but I'm mostly um, an online um, coach. Uh, so I specialize in helping women who struggle with uh, low self-esteem and anxiety, predominantly social anxiety. And I work on multiple levels. Um, so I work with the mindset. I work with emotions. And I also work with the body. So that would be things like nervous system regulation. Yes. So what I do is um, typically I try to understand somebody's um, somebody's history and why they might be struggling with what they struggle with. And um, from there, usually we try to go to the root of it, which is um, typically something that happened in your childhood. So our childhood um, affects the way we see the world today, even as adults. It also affects the way we respond to the world. So things like um, our triggers, for example, is something that typically, even though we think it's something that's happening in the present moment, Typically, our reaction is an accumulation um, of our past experiences that is related to the present moment. So, yeah, so I try to help my clients go back to that time in their past and um, unravel with that memory and process the emotions that have been trapped and so that they can be free from that trauma and how it's showing up in your life oh it's awesome i probably many women need it <laughs> yeah <laughs> we all have some little or bigger traumas from our childhood i think uh, just uh, sometimes it's it's not too big sometimes it's yes and you, you are here yes. to have them <laughs> yes for <laughs> sure i do believe that everybody has trauma it's just the extent to which it's affecting our lives or um, the yeah the extent to which it's sort of showing up and sort of preventing us from living life to the fullest. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they had usually expectation about, uh, toward us and uh, we sometimes we couldn't be really what we are. I think because of sometimes because of the 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 parents what they expected. Yes, yes, for sure. I do believe that um a lot of people are living their lives based on what their parents or society has taught them um in terms of how they should live their life, like what a successful life looks like. Like typically it includes things like having a family, having a good career, a good job, you know, um, yeah, having some sort of financial success. Um, typically those are like the the typical mouse milestones of success and how we were raised to um sort of aspire to have our lives um turn out. But very often these sort of conditioning. And of course, there's also other layers of conditioning underneath it. It's things like, um, potentially it's things like, oh, you need to achieve these things. If, if not, you're not worthy or you um, you need to be better than a certain person or, you know, a certain standard to be considered successful or worthy. And um, these are the sort of the underlying stories and beliefs that we were taught that kind of stays with us. and. What tends to happen is it prevents us from really connecting with who we are on the deeper level, really honoring 
what our truth is, like the authentic uh, authenticity within us, um, who we are, what we stand for, what really lights us up. Um, yeah, so a big part of trauma healing is actually also about returning to the self, returning to who we really are underneath it all. Yeah, and that is a process of unlearning and letting go of some of the beliefs that we were taught mm -hmm. so that we can come back to ourselves, so that we can, you know, honor our desires once again. And yeah, and that typically would le lead to a more fulfilling life. Yeah. And how are you doing? Are you using some meditation or some therapy? Some Yes. So I would say a lot of my work is very meditation based. Uh, so there are a few parts to my work. So typically I start my work with um, some mindset coaching because I do believe, I do think that a lot of people um, very often we have very fixed ideas of what life should look like or what, you know, we want to achieve. And essentially, we all have a set program in our mind. And usually when I start working with people, I like to work on the mindset level first so that I can sort of challenge some of the beliefs that people might assume is the way to do life. Um, but it doesn't actually have to be. And it's usually when you are able to sort of challenge these beliefs and start cons uh, start being open-minded to considering other possibilities. And that's usually when I start to go a bit deeper and I start to um, go into the deeper trauma healing part of my work. And that actually, um, that actually consists of uh, bringing my client into a deeper meditative state. And in that state, I would typically get them to sort of identify with their sensations in the body. So allow their sensations to lead them. And from there, we would typically be able to identify some kind of a root cause or origin of um, their triggers. So whatever is present in your life at the moment. And from there, that would that would be what we call sort of like the trauma um, that is keeping them, holding them in that repeated pattern, that repeated behavior. And so once we're able to go into that trauma, we then try to process whatever emotions are trapped that hasn't been processed. And when that's completed, typically speaking, most people would then be able to sort of see that experience with fresh eyes mm -hmm. or from a perspective that is not tainted by emotion. So to give you an example, for example, if something happens and you get really angry about the situation, when you're really angry, your, t your thoughts, the thoughts you have about the situation would typically be from a place of anger, from a mm -hmm. place of blame, from a place of, you know, why is this person attacking me? Or, you know, why is this happening to me? Or, you know, it comes from that narrative. And so that's kind of, it's similar from a trauma perspective in the sense that when we have trapped emotions, we view that experience from that lens, from that emotional lens. and um. And that is actually what keeps us stuck in that pattern. And so what we want to do is to go back there, process the emotions. And once the emotions have been released, that's usually when you, you are karma. And when you're karma, you're able to see things for what they are. So similarly, back to the example, if you're angry, you will have angry thoughts. But if you were to, you know, let yourself breathe through the anger and, you know, give yourself a moment to calm down you might see things differently. You might have a fresh perspective. And typically that perspective is more objective. And um, that is what we want to get to when it comes to um, processing our trauma. And very often, so when we have trapped emotions, our trauma will cause us to have limiting beliefs. But when we have released those emotions, very often we then get 
um, a perspective that is a lot wiser and it's a lot more empowering. And that is also a lot more aligned with our authentic selves. Yes, nice. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, when we actually can get to deep inside, we will see from different angle the things. Sometimes I'm telling to my daughters just to to swap, and somebody telling them something just to to change what if it will be the, on the opposite. She will be on the opposite side. And what will she expect for them? And then then they can think about it. Maybe maybe they are wrong in something. Yeah. And and yes. it, it is not uh, that they had to be angry about that. Yes, yes. Yes, that's right. So, and uh, what is your story? Why, why did you start this coaching? <laughs> yeah, so my story. Um, I guess definitely the reason I am doing what I'm doing is because of my story of uh, my past experience. So when I was younger, I was raised um, as a good girl. Like I was very obedient. I was very quiet and I was the girl whom my parents would um, take with them to their friends, you know, parties. And I would be the quiet one who sits in the corner with my book, even if there are no other kids to play with me. Um, so I wouldn't, I typically would be, yeah, really quiet, really obedient. And I don't cause trouble for my parents, <laughs> essentially. Um, so I always thought that that was a good thing. And it was only when I started university and I, so I'm originally from Malaysia, but I went to Australia for uni. And well, first off, there is such a huge cultural shift because in Asia, you are actually taught to follow the rules, mm -hmm. um, you know, don't deviate from the rules um, and also don't have too much of an opinion or don't ask too many questions, <laughs> you know, don't be too critically minded. and. So going to Australia, it's a completely different culture in the sense that people were opinionated. They were taught to, you know, have an opinion, to speak up, um, to be really outspoken. And I felt very out of place to begin with. I felt the the transition, the cultural difference in itself was a huge um, culture shock for me. And to add to that, because I was already like relatively more reserved, uh, more quiet and shy in comparison to my peers from Asia, I, I felt like I struggled doubly as hard as a result of that. So it was only when I was put in, um, when I started university, when I was put in positions where I had to speak up as part of class that I started to notice that I had a lot of social anxiety. So what would typically happen, for example, is um, during tutorials where you're meant to go around the room and um, sort of voice an opinion that you had from, you know, the weekly reading, I would be trembling the whole time. I'd be like, you know, my palms would be sweaty. I'm just like waiting for my turn and I can't even focus. I wasn't even paying attention to what other people were saying. I was just so fixated on me having to speak, you know, and even then I wouldn't be able to think straight. Typically, I would just say the minimum I, you know, could. And so I just cannot wait for it to be past my turn, essentially. <laughs> and the other thing that happened to me <laughs> was, um, yeah, even when I was in crowds, when I had to wait for lectures to start, I would actually go hide in a bathroom where I didn't have to be around other people. <laughs> yeah, because to me, just standing in a crowd with so many people um was very scary for some reason so that was when I started to notice that I actually had social anxiety yeah and um and this this kind of followed me all the way into adulthood I at that time I didn't even know this was called social anxiety I just I just knew I struggled and I just avoided crowds. I just avoided situations that would bring this sort of um, anxiety up for me. 
And when I was working, I once again had um, issues with, say, for example, going to meet clients, going to meet strangers, you know, joining a meeting with lots of other strangers. Those sort of things would trigger me. Those sort of things would actually make me, um, knowing what I know now, I would, my body would essentially enter the free state. Like mm -hmm. I would freeze and I would shut down and I would actually really struggle to think straight and speak up. Um, yeah. So as a result of that, I tend to be the quiet, reserved one in the meeting room and that actually didn't help me in terms of my career, um, as you can imagine. So, and what, and even then, I actually still ex accepted that I thought this was just something I would always have to struggle with. I didn't realize that there were things I could do to help myself. And it was only much later when I happened to stumble upon trauma healing. Um, I haven't assembled. Well, first it was um, rewiring the subconscious mind that really intrigued me. And then eventually it led me to understand more about trauma and trauma healing. And that was when I decided to sort of follow my curiosity and learn a little bit more about it. And so I actually signed up for a course um, to learn how to do trauma healing, but mostly for my own benefit, not, not, not so much to become a healer, um, but to learn about it and to see what um, benefits I'll get out of it. And it was during this course, and because as part of the course, we were required to practice on one another. So it was during this course that I started to see shifts in myself. I started to realize that like, whenever I enter a social situation, when there were strangers, in the past, I would have all these thoughts like it's as though I have multiple layers of um, filters before I could speak it would be filters like um oh what would they think of me is it okay for me to say this you know is it safe for me to say this um that sort of thing and I realized no like knowing what I know now that back then I was living my life with all these filters mm -hmm. which basically it was so hard for me to express myself because before I would say something I need to go through all these layers of questioning, you know, all these layers of convincing myself that, oh, it's actually okay to speak up. So, and that's one of the reasons why I never really spoke up. But I think now, whenever I enter social situations, there's just less of a barrier. There's less concern about how people see me or, you know, I will make a mistake or anything like that. So in a way, there's a lot more emotional freedom to just mm -hmm. be me. Yeah. It's for many women, I think it's problem to to say aloud what we think because somebody else may be expecting something else, but we think otherwise. So we we sometimes we just sitting quietly. <laughs> yes, but yes. We have to say because it's it's our opinion. It's it's coming from us. So we think like that. So we can say that it's we. We are yes. different. Everybody is different. So we we are unique and everybody is unique and everybody can make mistakes, but that's how we are. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think one of the like I think co comparing my old self to now, there were so many mindset um shifts that needed to happen for me to get from there to here. Like, I think the old me would always be like, oh, I cannot make a mistake. I cannot sound stupid. I cannot ask a silly question. You know, I must I must um, show up as though I know a lot of things. And all of these things were sort of the expectation I had on myself that made it so difficult for me to just relax and be myself. And like now, now on the other hand, I feel like, I allow myself to make mistakes. So even if I did make mistakes, I try to approach it with a sense of humor, you know, um, being okay with it. And I also sort of allow myself to, yeah, just speak my mind and allow 
myself to accept the fact that maybe some people are not going to resonate with what I say. Maybe some people are going to have, you know, a different opinion, but that's okay as well, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that, that, that's how people can discuss things. One have and one opinion, another have another opinion, then we can discuss about that. That it's it's not a problem. It's we don't have to see things on the same way. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. And and that's and that's the kind of mindset shift. Like because I think thinking of the old me, I wouldn't see it that way. If someone had an opinion that was different from me, my own, I would actually take it personally. I would take it as oh my God, maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I don't know enough, you know? I would take it personally rather than embracing the fact that, hey, we all just have different opinions. Yeah. So, and now I, you are here and speaking <laughs> and feeling yeah. as, so, uh, as uh, somebody else is, yeah? Other women, because I, I think uh, you, you are doing a great job. And uh, you. you are the, the the example that it can somebody do, yeah. With your yes. heart, it's easier because your way your journey was longer because you didn't know. But if somebody now yes. knows and can hear you, can ask you to help her. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, it's great. Um, and. Uh, uh, I will write down if people want to reach you, your uh, your Instagram or or Facebook. Yes, yes. So and, uh, I am predominantly on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, yeah, and my Instagram handle is Joycely dot healing. So J O Y C E L W -E, e dot healing. H E A L I N G. Yeah. Uh, I would ask you a few things, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what uh, are your plans for the future? My plans for the future? So I think that's always evolving. Um, I'm always learning more about trauma, and I'm always learning more sort of new modalities on how I can help people. I think my one of my goals for the future is i do want to spread the word about trauma i do want to spread the word about how our childhood affects us and very often um we do not realize it and that can really affect the way we see life and the way we show up and and our and different aspects of our, our lives like our relationship our career and all that um, and really learning about trauma is actually a very empowering thing because rather than feeling like all of this is happening to me, you start to realize that there's a pattern and that pattern often starts with our mindset and our beliefs. Yeah. So yeah. that's my, that's one of my plans for the future is to sort of um, spread the word and help more people understand their trauma. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. And uh, and if you could go back in time and you could give a, advice to younger yourself, what would it be? I think the advice I would give my younger self is to listen to my body or listen to my authentic self. So actually a big part of trauma healing is also reconnecting with the body so what i um as i do more and more studying as i learn more about trauma and even sort of reconnecting with the authentic self i'm starting to notice that when i was younger a lot of like all those times when i was doing things that were out of alignment with my true self or or I was in relationship that wasn't good for my true self, that wasn't like empowering my true self. Instead, it was causing me to betray my true self. My body was actually always telling me, 
that things were not okay. Like, I think that people talk about the gut feeling. Um, mm -hmm. Like, the gut feeling was always there. It was always telling me what was right and what was, wasn't right. But I think being someone who lived in your mind so much, I wasn't really taught to connect with the body and to listen to those feelings. And I think if I could give advice to my younger self, I would tell my younger self to trust that gut feeling more, to learn to tune into that gut feeling more, and to let that gut feeling sort of be my compass in life. Nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was You're welcome. Great, it was a great talk. I hope you will be welcome again. <laughs> for sure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye.